Hey, what's going on guys? Shitty here. Back again playing some more Half-Life Alex. Um Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think my task bar is at the bottom, but when I tried to get rid of that, it actually crashed the game for some reason. Uh so I try to like put down my task bar, hide it, or pull up another window, and it just like Half-Life Alex crashes. So I think you're just gonna have to see my task bar. I don't remember if it was up in my last video or not, but yeah, sorry. But uh, you get to like peep on all the shit I have in my task bar. Yes, I have a very bloated one. I like to, <laughs> I just like the convenience of clicking shit really fast. Ooh, but yeah, last time we took down Jeff, and that was a ton of fun. You can't really see my head either, <laughs> because I kind of had to make the camera really small in order to get the green screen. Because I, I have a not too big green screen. <laughs> and I've moved it back further than I normally have it, so that way I have more space for VR. Do you guys see this? No, you can't. I have OVR open. I don't think you guys can see. Hang on. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Oh my god, I am getting like some really bad... Like, blurring. I'm like smearing on my... And my headset, Jesus. Ooh, it's actually like making me a little dizzy. Like it's like everything's like doubled almost when I turn. Like, oh. Okay. Yeah, everything is like kind of wonky for me, but it's not too bad, so I'll just deal with it. I don't think it's affecting OBS. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything different in OBS, I don't think. So, yeah. Anyways, downward we go. Yeah, it's making me a little dizzy, but it's not too bad. I'll deal with it. Sorry, I haven't been uploading a whole lot, but it's life has been keeping me busy. What the fuck? Oh shit! Man, this smearing is awful. Like it, it's like everything is like smeared and it's like doubled. It it looks kind of like 3D vision in the headset. It doesn't. I don't think you guys are experiencing it in the VR view. Because I don't see anything different on OBS, except maybe a lower frame rate. Ooh. Sucks for you, buddy. I'm seeing if there's anything I can pick up. Looks like no, there's not. Let's go ahead and keep this out. Damn. Got fucked up, didn't you? Like you deserve. Really nice and bright though in here. What are these little green things? Are those like little tiny my like tiny tiny versions of the the flying insects? I forget what they're called. I'm also using both my, my AV1 encoder for both recording and for VR, which is, I'm also a little nervous about that. That might be why I'm getting like this blurring thing, because last time I didn't do that. I'm not sure. I'm really trying to keep an eye on OBS though, in case it starts dropping a ton of frames or if it stops recording, crashes. I'll keep my pistol on for now. I have plenty of ammo for it. Or a decent amount of ammo, at least. Ah, uh, I see it. Come here. I have 40 resin. You know, Russ, I'm sorry I didn't get you any vodka back there. 
That's okay. Well, you could pick up some on the way back. I see. I also have more room for VR, not like a ton more room, but I have a decent bit more room, so I'm more comfortable now actually moving around and doing stuff. Even though the camera's a lot smaller <laughs> for you guys because I still want to keep the green screen effect. But my green screen isn't very big, so I had to like just make the camera smaller. God, this is like, the headset is actually like, it's really getting to me how everything is like smeared and blurry. Like everything is like blurry. It's like I'm like using drunk goggles or something. But, oh, it's actually getting to me how, it's not making me like super dizzy or anything. It's just making me. A little bit off. But those three. Is this? Oh, I remember this. There we go. But this was a skull for a second. I think you guys know joke. You guys actually might be able to see things better than I can right now because that's how blurry it is in here. Like I can see for the most part, but like actually, anytime something even slightly moves, it like really throws everything off. So you're gonna. I don't feel like restarting it, which is why I'm not doing that. But. Probably get an extended magazine next time, but there. I think I want to get the grenade launcher. Yes. I also sold my other PC because I just don't have anything to do with it, so I'm just using this one. And also, I plan to actually. Um, I sold the other one mostly because I actually want to build another PC with probably a Ryzen 7000 series and just use that. Um, oh shit. Oops. Oops, accidentally brought up <laughs> virtual desktop. Combine, do you know how to upgrade a gun? I'll give them that. Yes. Okay, cool. I'll grab it to reset it, okay. Cool, it just gave me a free grenade with that too, I think. I'll take it. I only have one risen left, so I can't do anything. Actually, since I brought up that, it's still a little blurry, but I actually kind of fixed it, it looked like. Where it's not so blurry anymore. Since I brought up virtual desktop, it's still a little blurry, but it actually isn't nearly as bad right now. So now I know if that happens, just bring up virtual desktop and hope that that fixes it. Now it's just a little blurry, but not too bad. No. Blackie! Oh no, it's dead. That's an ant lion, Russell. That's an ant lion? Yes. So yeah, I hate the ant lions. Yes, they're leggies. Except for when uh, I was controlling them in Nova Prospect. That was like one of my favorite parts of the game. Being able to control ant lions with the pheromones. That part of the game was so fucking fun. Here. Do anything right there. I 
Thank you. And also, I know the mic quality isn't great. That's just because I'm using the Oculus mic. Because I think it's just better quality than, or about the same as my other mic. It's my, like, mini mic that I have, so. Not even gonna bother using it. Laser sight makes those guys way easier to deal with. Because then I don't have to like aim perfectly or try and do any of that. Try and see if there's anything behind there. No. Alright, nothing. I think it's just the other side of the door. Oh! I almost missed that. Sometime this week or something, I'm probably actually going to try and stream some uh, Subnautica because that's I want to get started in that game. Subnautica and Mass Effect. Those games I actually want to get started on. Here's another developer commentary. Yeah, Lion Combat. In some of our early experiments bringing Half-Life 2 enemies to VR, we found that ant lions in particular showed promise and were interesting to fight, but tended to quickly overwhelm playtesters. They were able to get into the player's right physical there. space too quickly and applied so much pressure that players just ended up endlessly teleporting around trying to get away. Around the same time, uh, we I were discovering that. that all players, even relative novices, have surprisingly good aim in VR. The variability of aiming ability amongst players is simply much lower in VR than it is in mouse and keyboard games. To take advantage of the idea that players would consistently be able to make precise shots, we started testing an antlion design which players could slow down by shooting off the legs. Playtesters reacted yeah, positively that's I to both about the need for accuracy and the organic feeling that this gave the antlions when their legs flew off and the injured antlion continued to limp toward them. The removal of the legs was clear to players, but presenting the fact that the abdomen was invulnerable until the legs were removed was a long-standing challenge. There was no single solution to communicating this effectively to playtesters, but rather a series of small additions that communicated the behavior. For example, we made the abdomen dull and black one invulnerable, and changed it to match the bright orange legs as it became vulnerable. I do think shooting that's a better thing to do. Shooting armored parts of the antline would generate sparks and hard ricochet Makes sounds, it much more noticeable. While shooting the vulnerable body parts resulted in orange blood spurts and soft impact sounds. We also designed the death animations to emphasize the abdomen exploding and ensured that an exploded abdomen chunk was left behind after the antline was dead. <laughs> yeah, I think that makes sense because it, it might be a bit on the nose, like, oh, why, why... Like, why are you making it so bright? But I think that that's important, especially for someone who's like, this was my first VR game, my first big VR game. And yeah, that did help me. I think when I originally played, I think I just immediately shot the legs because they're like bright orange. And that does help out a lot. I'm actually doing save here. Like I said, it's still got that blur effect, so when I try and move, like when I turn my head real fast like this, it's got like this blur to it. I, I don't think you guys can see it, but I can, and I'll tell you it's distracting. Too bad. 
I'm trying to see if there's anything. I thought it was glowing for a second. Not too bad at all. I do want to play more VR stuff, but it, it is difficult. Like when I'm like I work 40 hours a week, I work full time, and it's just hard to like come home and just want to play VR after a long day at work. And at my job, I'm doing a lot of walking, and I'm usually tired. I don't want to come home. The first thing I always do when I come home is I usually eat some ice cream and take a shower. No joke, that's like my routine. I come home, I make a lot of ice cream. So I usually eat some ice cream and then I take a shower and then I just chill. Some I play some like Call of Duty or some Apex or something or CS2. But normally I don't want to like set my VR up and play this after a long day at work. Like today I'm off, which is why I don't mind it, but... Oh yeah, like I was talking about earlier, I actually sold my second PC. It was my old one that I was using to record stuff because I found this PC actually can do that just fine. Um, and I want to make a second PC that has a Ryzen 7000 series in it anyways. Um, probably like, a, I, I don't know, maybe a 7900X or something. And then I want to use the, those have integrated graphics. So I can use that and then try and use the encoder that comes on that and just use that. And then worst case, if I do, like, it's putting out a 4K signal onto my second monitor and recording is too much, I do have another, my old 1660 I'll throw in there just so that way that's doing the brunt of the video work. My very first graphics card, by the way, that I used to build my very first PC a couple of years ago, it was the old 1660. And I traded it with my friend and then I bought it back just to have, and I still have it now and it's just sitting here doing nothing. So, yeah, and I just went on eBay and sold the gold. Fun there, buddy. Oh, I wasn't even sure what I was doing. I'm just doing this like scan, look around. It's like little exhibits. There we go. Don't worry about all that broken glass, Alex. Now that's where I gotta go. Oh, I probably could have shot that and made it explode. Let me see. Yes, it will still explode. Okay, good to know. I wasn't sure and I couldn't remember which one made it explode and stuff. Oh, I know. But yeah, like I said, I, I sold that PC and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna build like another one, a much smaller one too that takes up less space in my desk, like probably a micro ATX. I want to do a mini ITX, but I, I want to still have room for both a capture card and a graphics card unless I, just in case that I need to throw my 1660 in there. Um, then I have room for both my capture card and a graphics card because if I get a, my, a mini ITX, I can only do my one or the other. I don't really want to do that. Oh shit, I almost fell down. Oh, didn't really have to crouch. Hey, any news on the data pod? Ah, uh, your dad's head's down. He's working on it. He's got to be close. Great. Something popped up, some warning or something. Didn't see what it was. That's a lot of them.
feel like an explosive I can get somewhere. Let me get my shotgun out just in case. Oh my, oh, I remember this room. I forgot about it. So now, Jesus Christ game. Thank you for doing that. It's, it's greatly appreciated. Ah, uh, you did have something hide back there. Your shoulder's getting kind of, getting kind of sore holding up the controllers and like just holding it up this. It's because I'm weak. Jesus. Let's, uh, let's not do that. Definitely grab that, though. I think anything's in there. And that's just the other side. Probably should have opened it the other way, but yeah, we all make mistakes. Oh dear. I haven't been to a zoo in a hot minute. But my sister kind of wants to come out here, maybe. And if she does, I might go to the zoo with her. Place to hide stuff too. Foliage. All of the foliage in the game animates in response to player touch and environmental wind conditions. The foliage animation is entirely procedural and is computed on the graphics processor using vertex shader deformation. A voxel field that travels with the player's body is used to track the location of the player's hands in space. The hands effectively draw motion trails into this voxel field, which can be sampled by the foliage's vertex shader and used to drive deformations, allowing the player to bat the foliage around with their hands. The foliage also interacts with wind, Look, allowing us to give ambient motion to the plants. In order to accommodate Kinda. a range of environmental design, we tuned the wind deformations at different speeds, from slight drafts to hurricane force winds. It turned out, though, that the ambient wind was never required to be more than a moderate breeze, and for most of development, the hurricane effect was unused. This particular zoo habitat was hmm. added late in development and required a critical extension to the procedural foliage animation well, system. Grenade thing over there. Prior to adding this habitat, the foliage didn't need to deform in response to enemy animation or grenade explosions, but of course, this area is all about throwing grenades at zombies. To address this, oh, we added a right low here. resolution voxel field that could be sampled by the foliage shader to apply additional deformations. This low resolution voxel field, which is about one cubic foot per voxel, is fixed in space and spans the entire habitat. For comparison, the voxel field that travels with the player is about two cubic inches per voxel. Enemies and grenades within the space can write motion trails and impacts into the low resolution voxel field, which are ultimately interpreted by the foliage shader as wind forces. This is when preparation met opportunity. When grenades explode, they are creating localized hurricane force winds. Huh. All that I kind of got from that is like the foliage moves and grenades will make the foliage move. From where? Mike, 
arm. You actually push this forward a little bit, Jesus. That actually hurts. I was gonna say, if that doesn't kill him, I'm gonna be kinda pissed. If they have a health thing, but I don't need that, and I already have a health thing on me. There we go. Thank you. Oh, it's a lot of gunk. Yes, please. Thank you. Oh, exit. Oh, look at all these drawings. They actually look pretty nice. This might be my thumbnail. Yeah, right there. Let me actually back it up a bit more. Yeah, there we go. It also looks different on the screen than it does in the headset. That's something I noticed when I watched the footage back. Is that it does look different. Like the colors and stuff looks different uh, in the headset than it does on the screen for you guys. I don't mind using that. Kill it. Okay. I was gonna say, I need launcher. Better fucking kill that thing. Let me actually back up before I do this. I thought that was a grenade. That was like kind of that used to be a grenade, I guess. Oh, that was like part of the grenade I threw, I think. Just what that was. Oh yeah, let me get another grenade actually. Just carry another one. Popped up, but something did. Yeah, they said the full H moves, which it kind of does, but also it kind of just kind of doesn't. Russ, I think this is what I use. Do you think my thumbnail before? Turn a gorilla into a zombie. Honestly, oh, if there's God. a gorilla on the loose, I'm not sure a hit crab's gonna make it much worse. That's also true, because they don't seem to like really enhance strength or anything from what I've seen. They just take over, and they actually probably make them a bit weaker. Uh, you guys can let me know in the comments. This is one of those games where like, it gives me health when I don't need it. Really, when I need health is when I'm fighting Combine, and that's usually when it doesn't give me a ton of health. Because the Combine will fuck me up. Ew. Oh! Three things left. I did not see those. See, those things blend in. They just look like something on the wall. Like that one. Like they just look like some regular shit. So I wouldn't expect them a lot of times to be 
a whole fucking enemy. <laughs> Yeah. What is it, Dad? It doesn't look like they actually built the weapon. It's like they, I don't know, discovered something. Or maybe they uncovered it. What do you mean? It's no reason this, right? They tracked it to an old apartment building in the QZ. But instead of going in to get it, they grabbed the whole building and built a vault around it. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. They must have got Gordon. Of this thing. I'm trying to figure out whether we ought to be. Oh, no, not Gordon. They got the G-Man. Too risky. Hell yeah. Oh, what the f I don't think you guys can see this, but I have like a fucking... There you go. I had a thing of OVR toolkit open a window with my OBS in it, and it was just sitting to the side there. I just hadn't looked there. <laughs> They were very few existing antlion sounds to work with coming into Half-Life Alex. So unlike most of the familiar Half-Life creatures, which often had legacy sounds layered in, nearly all of the sounds for the antlions were completely new material. Starting with an almost blank canvas, we drew inspiration from the behavior didn't have of any the, the sounds left, I guess, to inform from their sound stuff. design. Since the antlions attack in waves, it seemed reasonable to us that they communicated and organized into groups for attack. This idea led us to incorporate complex insect-like clicking sounds, the final version of which began as recordings of European starlings, which turned out to provide more variation in character than Jesus. insect recordings. Here, you can hear the original European starling sounds. It sounds like a cricket. Kind of. We took those recordings and layered them with designed elements to create the antline sounds used in the game. Interesting. That head crap went somewhere. I don't know where, but he went somewhere. <laughs> Do that. Yeah, every time I fuck the combine, it's like super stressful because the combine actually can fuck me up pretty easily. Badass down. Three south left. I thought you were dead. Ooh. Yeah. 
Come on. Three next left. That was actually kind of stressful. Didn't even see it. I just saw my the rustles go up. And I went for it. I actually am surprised at how well my system's doing because, like I said, I was worried that I'm using the AV1 encoder for both the Quest and OBS, and I was worried. Now, my bitrate's a little low for OBS, which is probably why I think it's at 25k, I think, which is kind of low, but it's good enough for me. It's either at 20 or 25k. Either way, I think that the quality of this video will be okay. Probably. I'm actually just going to get the shotgun out and just blast him. Take that, though. Of course, there's so many. God damn it. Come here. I also realized I should put another grenade on there. Gotcha, bitch. Three shells left. I don't gotcha. Thank you. This shit is nice. So yeah, not only am I playing this game again, but I'm also kind of using it as a te as a test for how well the AV1 encoder does with both recording and uh, VR, and it's done pretty well. It, it's kind of hard to find videos on it, I find, but I think it's just because not a ton of people test VR. Like, there's some people who do, but a lot of them don't. So it's kind of up to people who own them to just figure it out, which is just like, damn, it's, it's kind of rough to figure out sometimes. And these hands. I thought he had six fingers for a second. It's like, huh, interesting. Does it say Anim Interactables? In traditional games, Analog hmm. controls like levers, dials, and crank wheels usually play simple animations in response to a player's mouse click or key press. In VR, however, players with tracked hand controllers expect to be able to control analog interfaces by grabbing and moving them directly. To support this, we developed a new system that we call Anim Interactables. The opening mechanism of this health station is a good example of an Anim Interactable. To your left and right, you can see some more examples, such as a large railroad switch, 
the Vortigaunt's fire alarm doorbell, a crank wheel, a rolling cabinet door, and both the antenna and tuning dial on the radio. Anim interactables like the these allow us to give the player control of analog interfaces oh. while constraining their input to an authored range of motion. The system uses the position and orientation of the player's hand to drive the animation of a model which defines the analog interface. As the player moves their tracked controller, the Anim interactable continuously performs a search to determine if playing the animation forward or backward will place the interaction point closer to the tracked controller's position in space. This allows the player to drag the animation forward, backward, or hold it stationary. The result is an intuitive correspondence between the player's body and the virtual interface. It Furthermore, does feel really nice. these interactive animations don't necessarily have to make physical sense. Artists simply animate the range of motion they want the player to be able to control. These anim interactables have their debug visualizations turned on, so you can see the authored range of motion, including the nonlinear paths used on the railroad switch, the health station, and the crank wheel. Anim interactables allowed us to make all kinds of objects in the world interactive, from mundane, man-made devices to intricate combine mechanisms, without the need to run complex physical simulations. Feel free to play around with the anim interactables in this area before moving on. Last shell. Yeah, that's okay. I don't use no shit. Interesting. Oh, those are some mines. A whole lot of mines, too. He's just sitting in there, dead as fuck. I hope dead. I hope he's not just napping. Those up in case an enemy shows up. Yes, I love all this ammo though. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give Anything on your fat boy? No. I think it was meant for that guy. Wow. Alex! I didn't think that would kill me. Okay. Well, good. To know. Jesus Christ. All right. Good to know. Fine. Also, when Havlock Felix crashed, it crashed again, but it's like, it seems like it's just the window itself. It's not actually like the game crashed. Uh. Hey, shells left. See, I just wanted to note that. I didn't expect to send me all the way the fuck back here. now, but I'm still a little cautious because I don't want to hit something. I'm not going to listen to that again. I'm sorry, but no. I don't think there's any ammo or anything. I don't think. Yeah, I don't see anything in there. 
Come on. It scared the shit out of me this time around for some reason. I think I was like, what the fuck? Whew, I thought that was an actual combine there. Okay, game, you got me. Actually, should save here. Just in case. And also, I think I can just turn this shit off. Sorry, little buddy, but uh, you got to go. I should save again since I'm out of the room and I healed and I'm by a healing station. Any other goodies? No. All right. There we go. Oh my god, that big splat. <laughs> Jesus, look at that. And it's gone. <laughs> Having fun in here, buddy. That might have destroyed something in here, I don't know. I don't think most things can get destroyed. Although I do think... I'm pretty sure I remember the... F what now? Wait, Dad, oh. what? It's not a vault. It's a prison. They didn't build it to keep us out. They tried to keep something in. Keep what in? I don't know. I'm not sure if this data part even knows. But they got something trapped in there. Whoa. Okay. So if it's not a weapon... Are we still doing this? The way I see it, whatever's in there doesn't like the Combine very much. So we got that in common. True. So, are we still doing this? We've come this far. I yeah. say we keep going. Yeah, I say, like, Alex is already here, might as well. We really shouldn't mess with, we'll call it off. That's my girl. I'll let you know what I find out. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, I remember there was one time in my first playthrough I was carrying a, uh, like one of those healing things that you put in the machines for your hand, and then I was fighting like one of the big dudes, and I think it, a grenade went off and like destroyed it. At least I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I think I have memory of that happening. Oh. Those things just blend in so fucking much. Toner puzzle. Sometimes large chunks of a level are shifted around or reordered as we work on the game. That's the case for this entire area and the toner puzzle it's centered around. In fact, for much of its existence, this area didn't even have a home anywhere in the game. It was originally built just to help prototype the toner puzzle mechanic. Over the course of a few months, the raw gameplay mechanics of toner puzzles were developed and playtested in a series of small test levels. Each test level explored a single gameplay concept. Those were things like using the Turner puzzle to draw the player's eyes to something interesting, such as Zen Flora and Fauna, well, creating moments that. of surprise when an enemy head crab popped out of a vent, or requiring the player to thread their arm and hand in behind pipes or other tight spaces. Once we figured out which of these ideas were working well, we combined them into a single test level with the Turner puzzle that strung all these concepts together in one single I think I can puzzle. reach that. Further playtesting in this level made us confident that Turner puzzles should be included in the game and we started adding them into other areas. But we didn't include the Tesla itself anywhere in the game. It wasn't until later that it became apparent that the zoo was in need of a pace break. 
We pay careful attention to player fatigue when we play test and look for cases where a puzzle I guess they exploration do play and test. resource gathering can be used to give the player a break from combat. There was such a need toward the end of the zoo level, and thankfully in this case we were able to make use of the Turner prototype level that had already been built. Hmm. Interesting. I think I can reach this one. Yes, I can. When we decided to resurrect our toner prototype level for use as a pacing break in the zoo, we had the opportunity to make some improvements and integrate elements that hadn't existed when we had oh, first started with the toner mechanic. For example, the newly developed explosive Zen bloaters were added at various points along the puzzle to surprise players and remind them that they need to keep an eye out for these hazards. Also, in the intervening months, the toner oh. mechanic itself had evolved from one where players merely push a ball of energy along the path to too. one which included branching paths and rotating junctions. This junction here in the breaker box is the linchpin of the whole puzzle, as the player must interact with it three times. Once to open the roller door to this back area, once to switch power away from the roller door to the last leg of the puzzle, and once to reopen the roller door in order to exit. Because this toner puzzle covers such a large physical area, including some zombie combat in the middle, players frequently lost track of the correspondence between the state of this junction and the roller door. This meant that they would trap themselves back here and not understand how to proceed. To address this, we made a lot of changes to the presentation of this junction over the course of development. The unique breaker box and tangle of conduit are designed to make the junction recognizable as the same junction from both sides of the wall. The shape of the hole in the wall and the orientation of the breaker box are designed to make sure that the player stands in the right location to have line of sight to the roller door and see that it closes when they route power away from it to the last leg of the puzzle. The door itself also makes a lot of noise and an unreasonable amount of sparks to draw attention to itself each time it moves. This particular puzzle twist was in danger of being cut for a long time, but with this series of refinements, enough playtesters understood its behavior that we were comfortable with shipping it in the final game. Interesting. We'll do this for now. Gotcha. I'll use my machine gun in here a bit. I definitely didn't think that was a real tiger. Definitely not at all. For a second. Not at all. Keep using this a bit. There are plenty of ammo for it, so. Do you have anything on you? Let's see it going off. The thing about VR is that I actually do get a headache after wearing the headset too long. Oh, fuck. 
Jesus Christ, I'm about to walk the fucking deal. Fucking asshole. But I get a headache after wearing it for a bit, so I don't play for a super long time. And it does get exhausting just like sitting up here. Yes, I know I'm just standing up, but still. There's gotta be something in here. Is there not? Well, maybe there isn't. That's a vent a head cap's gonna come out of, I'm sure. That's too noticeable to me. Where's that blue coming from? I guess just right there. I thought that was a resin, but I guess not. this TV the fuck out of here. Oh, what is that? Nothing, I guess. Jesus, it just looks fucking nasty. What am I hearing? What the f- Okay, there was an exploder somewhere. Don't know where, but somewhere. Jesus Christ, man. Not even gonna play these games with you. Okay, good. That door's still open. Oh. Just calm by now. Jesus. Oh my god. Matter grenades. Well, it's worth it just to take them out. Four shells left. Here, go home. No. Okay, I'm not, I'm right handed by the way, so me drawing with my left hand is a little bit. And I'm doing it in VR, so it's a little complicated. I was doing that with my left hand. Yes. Yeah, there's only two of them, though. That's not bad. Oh, God. Oh, these are the coffins. They straight up called out Alex's name, though. That's fucked up. Do 
Sorry, little buddy. You gotta go. save here thinking about it i'll probably stop here in a bit because i've been recording for what oh now we're in 20 minutes not a super long time but has it yeah hour and 18 minutes so i'll stop here in a bit Looks like it's itchy after wearing this thing for a bit. Like here on the back of my head, but because of the strap, I can't fucking reach the back of my head. That's itchy. And all these fucking pipes and shit. Went to a loading screen. I think for Subnautica, I might live stream it. Not totally sure. Holy oh, shit. let me see. Eli, the Vorge just took down the last substation. Brace yourself, Alex. It's gonna come down. Ugh. What the? Oh, they're holding it up. And they've activated some sort of emergency backup. They've activated a backup. Tell Alex there's no way that right backup there. is safe. She can shut it down. You're dead, I heard it. So head towards those beams, right? Right. That's gonna be the backup station. <laughs> Nothing. I'm on my way. Tractor beam. The emergence from the zoo gave us an opportunity to present players with a dramatic vista and to show them how much progress they had made in the journey to the vault. Yeah, this I think it does a great job of that. Because the vault's position in the, the world process. was already determined to be above the parking garage, which the player would reach at the end of the map. But placing the vault correctly in support of that location left the vault looking too distant to create the dramatic view we wanted here. We also intended to portray the cutting of the vault's power cables by the Vortigaunt at this point, but having this take place at such a distant location was unclear and confused playtesters. The solution was to move everything closer. The vault looked more imposing looming above the player, and the effects of the Vortigaunt's cable cutting efforts were much clearer. All we needed then was a conceit to justify the two vault locations. The location here at the start of the map, and the eventual location at the end of the map. Around this same phase of development, we were in the process of defining exactly how the player would bring down the vault, and our solution to that problem also helped justify the two vault locations. Tractor beams are a familiar cliché in science fiction, and often share a common yeah, visual style of an enveloping force field emitted net-like from a single point. Using a tractor beam as a combined failsafe device to catch the vault served us well here. It allowed us to prevent Alex from being crushed by the vault dropped out of the sky when the Vortigaunts cut the final power cable. He and probably would have survived that. It would have fallen like gold there. Moving the vault to the location Although the vault is massive. At the end of the map. Throughout the map, the beam itself also serves as a beacon, ensuring that the players are always able to recognize their new goal, the tractor beam yeah. control station. You can see that. Let me save. It's a lot of stuff. All right.
get. Oh, fuck. Both of them at once. Really, I think I'll. Why did it save here? I miss. God damn it. It's safe Alec. right there. I I might go back actually to the beginning. Okay. It was difficult. And it spawned me right there. Which is kind of like, oof. I was going to say, if I can't like get through it, then I'll just reload. And My plan was, if I couldn't get through this, I was going to come back here and just use my grenade launcher to just fuck them up. But hey, I didn't even have to use it. That's cool. Thank you. What happens if I shoot that? Okay, nothing it looks like. Hmm. Like I said, if VR wasn't so tiring, I would be playing it more often, but it's just... It's a lot. Like, set it up. Setting it up actually now is pretty easy. But it's still like, I don't want to have to like, do all this and then... After a long day at work, come home and like fucking play VR. Keep that there. I'm thinking that there's gonna be a healing thing there. I don't know if there is or not. If there isn't, then we'll use it, but. 
If there is, I'd rather just use that than save this. There we go. Think there's anything over there, yeah. Even if there was, I don't know if I'd actually be able to get it to the fence. So. Another one. There's somebody up there. That's not gone by. Maybe a scavenger? Be careful. Clear. I didn't even see him. Is it up there, I'm guessing? Because that was like the bright ass lights. Somebody. I, I think I remember this part. Is that the lady? I remember the first time I played the game, I didn't know who it was, but I think. Shit. It's gonna hit first with this again. I wonder if this is the lady who betrayed us in Half Life 2. I forgot her name, but like she was working with us. I thought she was Alex's mom, but the guys, you guys in the comments corrected me that no, she's not. I don't know if that's her or not, but. I'm thinking. I don't think I remember getting her identity in this game. So it might be that that's her and they just want to tell us because then Alex would know and if you have that, well, that just kind of ruins everything for the for Half-Life 2. Although this game does a lot of things to like make Half-Life 2 not super, the ending of Half-Life 2 at least in that game, collaborate. The final twist of the game presented quite a few storytelling challenges for the writers. The game is long, much longer than yeah. a movie and the surprise reveal of the G-Man at the end felt almost impossible to sustain over the entire experience. Everyone on the team assumed that through basic deduction, most players are going to figure it out along the way. So the solution, like in most good stories, was to just add more stuff, more details, more questions, and more nooks and crannies to the plot. The writers quickly realized that there was one big distracting name, Gordon Freeman, that would pull the player's attention away from any theories they may be cooking up on their own. We then realized that we could use the absence of the G-Man in the story in the eerie parallels between the G-Man yeah, and Gordon's experiences at Black Mesa make the people to think redirect Gordon player attention there. and propel the story towards the final act. If the player thought they had uncovered a new mission to save Gordon Freeman from stasis, then the twist at the end could be secure. To pull it off, the writers created a new, a solid mysterious character, a scientist collaborating with the Combine. This addition came late in the project, so the writers relied on another mm. tried and true tact. Base the character on an actor we're fond of, and then do our absolute best to cast and record with that person. The chosen actor had a struck oh, wow. a particular tone with the writers. She has an easy, in-command confidence, and a smooth, southern Missouri drawl. This not only sets her apart from the other characters in the Half-Life universe, but makes the character easy to hear on the page, which is incredibly important when time is short at the end of the project. And once she was in the studio, her pitch-perfect performance assured us that we'd made the correct decision. Of course, then the scene still had to be built. Level designers figured out what existing chunk of level track could be bumped out to fit the scene. The area we chose previously held some barnacles and a few light puzzle elements, which the designers weren't upset to lose. The level track had to be altered to funnel you into a place where the scene could unfold and the player could eavesdrop without getting a good look at the character. This served two purposes. One was that it would benefit the mystery for the scene to feel furtive and for the identity of the character to remain secret. But also, we could shroud the performance and the intricate facial animation necessary to bring a character to life. I like hearing stuff like this more. For the animators and the choreographers. Like in a lot of cases, 
not doing the work was the correct thing for both the story and our tight shipping schedule. Interesting. Let me say before I drop down here. Okay, I, I was gonna stop, but you know what? I'll go through this section and I'll quit playing. Oh yeah, I remember this part. Mostly. Oh, that's one of the fucking administrators or whatever they're called. Those things are powerful as fuck. Yeah, I think that is whatever her name is. Maybe it's not. It doesn't really sound like her. But they could have changed just for a second. Survived Black Mesa, then disappeared. Eli, they do have a super weapon. God damn it, Russ, they got Gordon Freeman. Oh, wow. That's good, right? This is very, very good. This is a miracle. All right. So. I remember Let's this section because I remember the combiner about to jump me. Oh, incoming. Hey, give me a second. I didn't fucking kill you. Okay, so the plan is to get to that control room and get Gordon. I'll be honest, people talk about him a lot, but I always just assumed he was dead. Me too. Hey, Dad. Are you there? Yeah, what's up, Alex? If Gordon survived Black Mesa, where's he been? I don't know, but I bet it's a hell of a story. Yeah. They explained to me in the comments of my Half-Life 2 episode that Gordon was like in in like stasis or something by G-Man for like 20 years or something. It was a while. So that's good to know. All right, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and end the episode here. Yeah. Ooh, okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. That was quite a bit of fun. Um, yeah, I, I want to do this more, but like I said, it's just hard to come home and then want it. Like, I just don't want to record most times, at least VR, <laughs> after working all day and shit. So I don't know a lot of times, but this was a lot of fun. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I don't know who that doctor is. I think from what I heard, they're actually working on another game. Because, uh, yeah, the way that this one ends off... I have played the game before, if you didn't know, it's on. It's even on the channel, the first time I played it. Uh, loved it. But yeah, I, I played it before, so I, I already know most of what's going to happen. And uh, I'm guessing that that's the doctor who betrayed them before in Half-Life 2, because that, that to me would make a pretty decent amount of sense. Like it's, you know, who, who else would it be? Unless I just want to introduce a whole new character and go from there but i guess we'll find out later i like i said i don't remember her ever being identified so that probably is the doctor but not totally sure 
But either way, that was a ton of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Have a great day. And uh, yeah, see ya.